Hello, I got a question from the YouTube comments that asks Care to make a video about your Sublime Text setup for Odin? How to set things up to actually start devving? Sure, um, I assume that you already have the Odin compiler downloaded and stuff. If you don't, then you can, you know, just go to odinlang.org and find it and install it. Now, when you have a Sublime Text set up, then the first thing you will want is some kind of build tool in Sublime. Build tool is like when you press Control Shift B or Control B, but Control Shift B brings up the menu with all the alternatives. Then you get this kind of stuff up here. So how do you do that stuff? Well, you go to the menu in Sublime and to tools and then you find build system and you click new build system. I can show the one I have already made, this one called Cat Game here. Uh, these are saved in app data, so I can go there and show you. Here we have Cat Game. So this is my build tool, build system. There's a few different things here. So you see these four alternatives here. Uh, the top one is this command here and the variants are these. And so I have one command that runs build.bat and then they have this one down here that runs build.bat and then run.bat. And build.bat is, it actually runs two more batch files. The only, like it runs build game and then build main. And I've split it up like this a bit for uh, reasons of um, how I use uh, hot reloading, uh, because when I hot reload I only want to build the game, not the main, because main is the thing that actually reloads the game. Uh, and then you get errors if you rebuild both. But that's the reason I've done it like this. Uh, but build game in, 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 in turn just builds with the Odin compiler. Uh, I have... You, if you download Odin compiler you probably put it in your path. I have it inside my repository in a subfolder. But, you know, you do however you want. And then it's all the uh, build options for that. Just a single command. That, and if you do build build a dot like this, then it builds the whole package in in the in this current folder. Um, good thing when you're de 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 uh, developing your sort of debug build is to put put in the the debug flag here at the end uh, on your uh, <coughs> Odin compiler uh, call. Uh, so we have the different variants. An important thing here is, of course, the file regex. What this one does is that it, whenever you do an error, you can press F4 in Sublime to jump to the next error. So if I make an error here, I say hello, which is a proc that does not exist, and I press the compile button, F7 or Control B will compile, and Control Shift B, like I said, will bring up the menu. But Control B and F7 does the same thing, and it runs the, the most recent one of these ones. Uh, but now you see that it says undeclared name hello and you press f4 and it jumps there and it does that thanks to the file regex here i will post this sublime build file in the uh, description a link to it in the description of this video so that's pretty important another important thing in your sublime setup is to have i pressed Control kb here that brings up the folder the sidebar here with the folders. These are the folders that's in the current workspace or project, or whatever you want to call it. One is for my game. The other ones I have in here is Raylib, Core, and Examples. And the reason we have Raylib and Core uh, there is that if I go back here and I find a line, a line that get mouse position, okay, then I can press F12 and it jumps to the Raylib bindings that I have. Uh, in there uh, so I can you know jump to symbols and I can also press Control shift R to search in all my folders and files for symbols so I can do like print and then I find you know in um, yeah stuff like this in the standard library um, and f as for as for like when you build with Odin, you saw you had I had the batch files, pretty simple 
build command. The reason it doesn't need lots of, you know, library linker flags and stuff is because, well, one of the few libraries I use is Raylib, and Odin comes with uh, Raylib binding. So if we look in, uh, if we look in my Odin folder here, there is a vendor folder, and then there is a Raylib folder, and here are the bindings. And these actually also come with the .lib and dll things. So if we look in raylib.odin at the top, then you will see that it actually will pull in these lib files while it is building, if you have this line here. So in that way you can have very simple build commands because the the libraries get pulled in automatically for you. So that's it's it's not much more than that. It's just have a simple build system, sublime build system that runs a batch file, runs your Odin compiler, and then uh, in my case, Raylib. The Raylib bindings take care of pulling in all the lib files. What I can say about debuggers and stuff, since I I. You know, you can actually do all this without Visual Studio installed even. Because what you can do instead of... Uh, instead of using... Like you can install Odin um, <coughs> compiler, but then instead of installing Visual Studio, you could Google portable build tools and find this stuff and install this instead, which will only install the Visual Studio compiler and the Windows SDK. Windows SDK. Uh, but in that case you have no debugger, but the Visual Studio debugger I don't like much anyways. One very nice alternative that's popped up recently is the RAD debugger. So if you google RAD debugger then you will end up on this GitHub page here where you can download it. It takes like a minute to download, you can set it up and point your exe to it. As long as you compile with dash debug then you can <coughs> debug your program with this. And, you know, I like, I have another video on code hot reloading. And one annoying thing with hot re reloading is that it doesn't work with Visual Studio when the debugger is attached because the PDBs get locked. But this debugger actually uh, seems to generate its own sort of uh, equivalent to PDBs from the data that the compiler outputs. So it actually sort of copies it in some way or something like that. So uh, you can have your debugger attached, hot reload, and everything just works. So that's very nice. And finally, I would say about the workflow when working with Odin, I would say whenever you're confused about anything, what you should try is first you go to the overview, you Google Odin overview, and you get to this page. You search around in here, try to find answers. If you can't find answers in there, then you see I had my game here and Raylib and Core and I also had examples folder. That's actually just a folder from also from the Odin compiler, this one. That one contains, now I jump to file, control P, demo.odin, uh, demo.odin. This one is like a demo file that showcases many of the language's features. In here you can also find lots of answers. If you can't find any answers there, then I would recommend you, since you have the core folder and the uh, inside your project and you can just control shift r jump to symbol maybe you're looking for a uh, os open or something or like yeah maybe you're looking for a function called open oh and then like okay in os mm, windows file windows okay here maybe maybe this is what you want or something you can also you know search in the whole in all the files including the core folder and the core library, the standard library is very well written and very easy to understand. So you can learn a lot about the language from reading the standard library. And if you still can't find what you're looking for, then I would recommend you hop on to the Odin Discord server and on there there's a hashtag beginners channel. Why do I say hashtag beginners channel? There's a beginners channel um, where you can get answers to many beginner questions and it's a very b many helpful people in there so that's it for my sublime odin setup really and uh, thanks for your question and i'll see you in the next video bye